ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله. من ارجى الايات التي سمعناها هذه الليله قوله سبحانه وتعالى وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب. One of the most hopeful ayat that we have heard today, tonight, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if my servants ask you about me, tell them I'm near, I'm very close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I fulfill any supplication that anyone supplicates for me. Where in other ayat, every place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned someone asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about something, he always says, tell him such and such. He never says the thing right away, except dua. Like يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ They ask you about the haram months, the months that certain things are prohibited. قُلْ Tell them. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ They ask you about the phases of the moon. قُلْ Tell them. But when they ask you about me, I am near. He didn't say, tell them I am near. To tell you that your relationship is direct with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need brother make dua for me. You make it. You see? Brother make dua for me? No, you make dua for yourself. And let the brother make the dua for you as he wants himself. Because if you truly love your Muslim brother or sister, you would definitely make dua for them. And that is one of the rights of one upon one another, is to be with them, to support them, to make dua for them, to help them, and to do all of those things. Al-Izz bin Abd al-Salam radiyallahu anhu, one of the great scholars, faqih and alim and muhaddith, Bilal al-Shah, he said, Wallahi, لَنْ يَصِلُوا إِلَىٰ شَيْءٍ مِنْ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَىٰ I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will never get to anything or accomplish anything without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَكَيْفَ يَصِلُوا إِلَىٰ اللَّهِ مِنْ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ So how can you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you can't get to a thing without Him, how can you get to Him without Him subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that's why we constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask His tawfiq and ask His help. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan is the alakun taqtaqun. So you may have taqwa. So you may stay away from the haram and do the halal and believe in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِتُكْبِرُ الْعِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَا عَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ To complete the idda, the number of the fasting days. What is today? The last day of Ramadan. This is the last night of Qiyam. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said tonight, and that is not possibility, tonight is the night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yu'atib min al-nar yu'atib tonight he emancipates, frees people from the hellfire more than the entire month akbar min ma a'atab tab'at min lahi u'atafa kul yawm fi ramadhan amma al-yawm yu'atib subhanahu wa ta'ala akbar min jami' ayyam ramadhan qala sahaba radiyallahu anhu is it the night that is the night of Al Qadr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees people from the hellfire? He said, no, including the night of Al Qadr tonight. People are free from the hellfire. 
more than every night of Ramadan, including the night of Al-Qadr. And look how he gave you the proof. The person when he works, he gets paid when he completes his work. Tonight is the completion of Qiyam. And this is the last Qiyam. This is the last day of Ramadan. This is the payday, brothers and sisters. And I am so pleased and happy to see the faces here. Especially it's a challenging night. A challenging night. Usually their energy, people are drained toward the end of Ramadan, which is not supposed to be. Because if you're getting paid today, usually the last hours, you're more excited because you're going to get paid. So you want to finish fast and get paid. And here some people are drained and dragging. It is because of the faith. How much do you believe in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is today? Look at the firework, 4th of July, very tempting. Everybody wants to go, everybody likes to go, everybody wants to see, and you have a standing point here to decide. Should I go there or should I promise or stay with the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and finish that? Yeah, you're here. You have definitely succeeded in making the best choice. Trials and tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers are always and constant for the purpose of coming back on track. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَنُذِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Punishment for this world before the punishment of the hereafter, so they make a back and heal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Evil and mischief spread from sea and land as a result of the sins. Yesterday a brother asked me why all the problems in the world and the Muslims and all that, and I said, don't go and look anywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ We earned it. We deserve it. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it. Some of what you did, the punishment and the horrible situations we're in, a result of part of what we deserve. And what's the reason? Because Allah enjoys subhanahu wa ta'ala punishing us? No. It's like you grab your son, he's doing something wrong and you hit him. You don't really want to hurt him. You don't want to really want to do something bad to him. You want him to wake up. And sometimes people with a staff wake up. And that is the whole purpose. Brothers, if you know your purpose of existence, pretend you're going to travel to Harvard and you want to study, you want to become somebody important. When you go there, you see clubs, you see uh, places, uh, theaters, and you see parks, and you see fun places and all that. What do you do? You ignore it as if it's not there because it has nothing to do with your goal. You focus on your mission and you go. This is life. This is life. Life is like a market. You go to the market and you start shopping. Everything is open before you. Pick this and pick this and pick this. But do you know what? You know for sure. You go and you pass through the lane where you gotta pay for everything you pick. And you go and to be charged for everything you pick. And this is life. Everything is open for you. You do whatever you wanna do. We know what's right and what's wrong that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, seal, seal, walk on earth, do whatever you want to do, pick, this is right, this is wrong, but know for sure you're going to be accounted for what you chose it. Good for good and bad for bad. And tonight I'm hoping that inshallah you stay strong, don't stack. This is the end of the Ramadan, yes, but this is the payday. You want to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're missing Ramadan, you're missing Qiyam. And really it made the taqwa for you and gave you the energy that's going to sustain with you inshallah until next Ramadan. 
stay here, do kya, participate, read Quran, give charity, do everything good, and on top of everything, istighfar. Every righteous, obedient obligation requires istighfar. In fact, some of the scholars said it is not accepted without istighfar. Every salah, stop for Allah, stop for Allah, stop for Allah. Hajj, aida khattu min arafat stop for Allah, stop for Allah. Siyam, they took bil al to complete the fasting. Did you really complete the fasting? Raise your hand if you completed the fasting. Raise high, I want to see how many fasted 30 days. So you completed, right? Wrong. Because fasting is not staying away from food and drinks. Have you protected your time? Did you cuss? Did you curse? Did you backbite? Did you slander? Did you lie? Did you, did you, did you? So we don't know. So what do you require? Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah after you finish past Ramadan, yes. Allah. So you may glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way you deserve Ramadan? No. Even when we have fundraising, we say takbir, nobody says Allah. And somebody told you to say takbir. You're supposed to say Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar all the time. When we tell you to say takbir, you don't say takbir. So you need a stuff for Allah for that. What Allah from the shkurun. So you show gratitude. Gratitude for what? For everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. Did you really thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough? No. So you need a stuff for Allah. Even la ilaha illallah needs a stuff for Allah. Can you imagine, brother? I know you're shaykh, but can you imagine that? <laughs> Read the ayah. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ What's after that? وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِلَمْ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Say La ilaha illa Allah and say astaghfirullah from yourself. Prophet Muhammad SAW, when he completed the mission, the whole message, the da'wah, Islam, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَعَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ SubhanAllah, istighfar after completing the whole message of Islam, which the whole universe is based on. It is to tell you that tonight, make a lot of astaghfirullah. And please remember your sins when you do that, it's more powerful. Say astaghfirullah for lying to my dad, astaghfirullah for lying to my mom, astaghfirullah for flipping my eyes, astaghfirullah for raising my shoulders, astaghfirullah for raising my voice, astaghfirullah for walking away, astaghfirullah for not taking the trash, astaghfirullah for not driving them, astaghfirullah. Yes, I'm talking, I'm focusing on the young ones because <laughs> parents have nothing to do in their life except their one, so they're, they're not doing sins to say astaghfirullah, they're just focusing on their kids that they go to Jannah, they don't even have time to pray. Because when they are praying, they're wondering where their kids are. Ah, but when your children are with you, that's a blessing that requires a stop for Allah. Is it Alhamdulillah or a stop for Allah? It's both, Alhamdulillah and a stop for Allah. So brothers, please, have the energy that this is the end of Ramadan, so when Eid comes, really be happy. Start listening to music, you miss the prayer, don't come to all of them. Oh, stop all of that. That's what Eid is, subhanAllah. That's what we say Eid. People, they go on Eid, it's like you have a free check now. Uh, welcome back. No, stop for Allah. Eid is to celebrate the obedience, so you want to be more sure of obedience. Mixing and all of those things, and people and women dressed everywhere, but uh, hijab and the way they look, and people talk and acting like this is my sister and this is my cousin, and all. And life goes on as if we're all married to one another. There's no haram, there is nothing. Feed and drink and eat and miss Tohr and miss Asr, and don't come to Fajr and plan for dressing and what. Isn't that what Eid is all about? No, it's not. Eid is not like that. But unfortunately, this is what we do. This is what we do. This is not Eid. Brothers, Eid is one of the best days of the year. In fact, Eid al-Adha is the best day of the year. Better than any day. Because it's a sign that you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 